Hi, and welcome to the next lecture in this unit where we're talking about the United Kingdom in terms of both its government and in terms of its culture. Um, so let's start out. Um, when people talk about the United Kingdom, I guess we need to get a couple of great. Uh, first of all, Great Britain is a geographical feature. It is an island. So when you're talking about Great Britain, you are talking about this. Um, on that island, there are three different countries on it. And hey, they are England, the most, uh, most populous and uh, powerful one, Scotland up here, and Wales down here. Um, now, these three countries um, you know, have, uh, have their own parliaments. Um, they uh, pass some of their own laws. And in fact, Scotland... And Wales um, have recently been pushing for a lot more autonomy. In fact, Scotland just um, recently decided not to declare full independence from England, which it could have done. Um, but important to keep in mind, three different countries on this one island. However, when you add these three countries up and another country that's on a different island, Northern Ireland, you the United Kingdom. Um, so that's Hopefully that can kind of explain to you why sometimes we say England, sometimes Britain, sometimes Great Britain, sometimes the United Kingdom. Um, you know, a lot of times people will, will mix these up, but we want to keep them straight. Um, and as a side note, this is the island of Ireland, and the island of Ireland has two countries on it. Northern Ireland, which is a part of the United Kingdom, and the Republic of Ireland down here. But that's... Uh, a question for a whole nother day. So let's talk a little bit about the government itself of the United Kingdom. Um, it's uh, essentially a constitutional monarchy. So it's, it's governed by the prime minister um, who is elected by parliament, which is, say, their version of our Congress, um, although it predates our Congress by quite a lot. Um, and the parliament is essentially just their legislature. But in addition to that, um, if it's governed by the prime minister, it is, it's kind of represented in another way by the king or queen, um, currently Queen Elizabeth II, who you may know because she's usually got those three little doggies with her, you know, very cute. Um, she doesn't have a lot of power, though. That's, that's the important thing about being constitutional monarch. Um, you're kind of, uh, you're constricted in terms of your power. Um, and this, this process of the restriction of the monarch's power goes way back, eight, 800 years or so. Um, and that was when the king's power over his people were officially limited by the Magna Carta. This is a very, very important document in terms of the evolution of Western governance. Um, now, the Magna Carta... Um, you know, it still offered the king a lot of powers, but in some ways restricted the king from being completely arbitrary, from doing whatever he wanted. Um, and over time, and mostly peacefully, um, you know, there was a civil war here, um, once in a while, uh, you know, a regicide, the killing of the king, um, which happened to Charles I. Um, but overall, um, the, the government shifted slowly and steadily in um, England and later the United Kingdom, from a um, from a you know unitary monarchy to a constitutional monarchy, where again the prime minister has power, um, and this this kind of slow and steady transformation was the tradition that uh, the government you're probably most used to, the American government, kind of sprung from. In terms of culture, one of our one of our kind of most important geographical ideas. Um, and don't forget, culture are the, is the ideas, um, beliefs, and behaviors that characterize the way of life of a group of people. And the United Kingdom has, you know, it has a lot of subcultures, but if we're going to look at the culture of the United Kingdom as a whole, there are a lot of really important things that you probably know about. And those include good old William Shakespeare, um, who... You know, I, I'm not sure which plays of his you've, you've read so far. Hopefully things like Hamlet or Romeo and Juliet. Um, my personal favorite, Macbeth, I think you read with Mr. Barrett um, sooner or later. Um, you've got the Beatles jumping ahead, uh, you know, say 350 years. Um, 
the you know especially if you ask your parents they are the most popular rock and roll band of all time probably most influential um john paul george and ringo you've got um incredible um in kind of a scientific intellectual culture in um in the united kingdom as well and you know previously uh england um isaac newton developed the theory of gravity uh, whether or not the apple actually fell down and hit his head, I don't know. I think that might be a um, a little bit of a myth. Um, but nonetheless, he was you know uh, a lot of our mathematical and scientific culture comes from um, England and later the UK or well Scotland as well. And these days, London, uh, culturally speaking, is hugely important in terms of um, the economy, in terms of literature. A lot of the most important uh, book publishers in the world are there. Um, music, it's still incredibly important. And film, you've, you've probably watched a bunch of uh, um, British movies, mo uh, movies from the United Kingdom, either knowingly or not knowingly. Um, good examples might be, I don't know, The King's Speech or... I'm trying to think what, uh, what your generation might know more. Um, actually, never mind. Your generation is confusing. So let's go on to our last. And in terms of, of military culture, the UK and the US have very tight bonds um, and you know, have fought together in most of the, their, their larger military experiences over the last century, um, including World War I, World War II, recently Afghanistan and Iraq, and... Um, both both are part of NATO, the um, North Atlantic Treaty Organization, um, which is uh, the U.S.'s kind of premier um, um, defense organization. Whew. So, a very brief cultural and um, diplomatic and governmental history of the United Kingdom. There you go.